Hey guys, great to have you here today. In this video, I'm gonna go over one of the most important concepts that a lot of you have probably never heard of. I know I was never told about this, and it's so counterintuitive. It doesn't really make much sense when you first hear about this, but I started working on it probably about six years ago or so, and ever since then, it was a big turning point in my ball striking. So before I did this, I tried to hit the ball the same every time. So let me know if this is the idea that you have in your mind, and it's exactly what I had in my mind, is that when we play golf, we want to be really consistent. And consistency means that we're going to make the same swing every time, and we're going to hit the exact same type of ball flight every time. So if that, we want to hit a draw, we're trying to hit that draw over and over and over again. We're trying to make that same swing, just repeat it over and over and over. That's what I tried to do for years. I had good days and I had bad days. And the problem is, on the bad days, I had no idea how to fix anything. I was just completely at the mercy of I could tell you within the first 10 minutes of getting to the range if it's a good day or a bad day, and it really didn't change much the rest of the day. I felt like I was fighting it if it was a bad day. I felt like I was fighting not or trying not to lose it when it was a good day. So that's basically just what they call mass training or just doing the same thing over and over and over again. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Now you will get better if you do repetition, if you do it the same every single time. No doubt about that. We do have to do a certain amount of repetition. We do have to do thousands of reps to ingrain muscle memory. But we can speed that up. We can actually make that a little bit faster by adding something called variability training. One of the most important things that I see that will change your game immediately is if we're trying to hit a, a shot off the ground, if we can make contact with the ground and the ball at the exact same time. So if you imagine when my club is coming down, if I have this tee in the ground underneath my ball, when my club is coming down, my club is meeting the ground and the tee roughly at the same time and then I'm making my divot out in front of the golf ball. If I can do that, if I can hit this tee over and over and over again, just like I did there, I'm gonna be able to hit a lot of good, clean golf shots. A lot of the difficulty comes in when I start to hit behind the ball. How many times have you been having a good round and all of a sudden you chunk a ball and it just dribbles a few feet in front of you? It's really embarrassing, super embarrassing. I've had it happen to me and it's not fun. And then on the next swing, you don't wanna chunk it, so we hit it thin and we're just constantly fighting to hit the ground clean. Well, there's two things that are really going to help with this. So one, I'm going to talk about a technique piece that we go over in the Top Speed Golf system. And then two, we're going to incorporate variability training, which has been proven, scientifically proven, to help you improve about a thousand times, a thousand percent faster. So you're really cutting down tons of hours of your practice time. So let's talk about what's going to allow me to hit the ground. I'm going to, I'm going to set, this, set this tee up a little bit higher so we can see that on the camera. The idea here, again, is that I'm gonna practice hitting this tee in the ground right at the same time. So let me go ahead and try that once. There we go, so I came down, clipped the tee, and you'll see my divot is in front of where the tee was. If I can do that every time, I may not hit the world's best shots, but I'm gonna be consistent. I'm not gonna have those really, really bad shots. So what I want you to do when you're practicing this is variable training. So now we're gonna tee this tee up, tee up lower. So there's my, where my golf ball would be. I'm going to go ahead and put my golf ball there just in case you can't see this on the camera very easily. And on the first one, I'm going to try to hit in front of this tee. So I'm going to try to miss this tee and take a divot in front of the golf ball. That's going to look something like this. There we go. And I swung right over top of the tee, had my divot come in front, but I didn't touch the tee. The second one, I'm going to try to clip the correct way. So that would be too far in front. That would be me hitting kind of down and too far in front of the golf ball. It wouldn't be a very good shot it would be a little bit thin on the face. So I'm gonna get a feel for that as I practice this variability training. The second one, I'm gonna clip the tee in the ground at the exact same time. You can practice, I love these because you can practice them in your backyard. You don't have to be at the golf course to do this. So here, there we go, tee in the ground. Probably can't see that, but I clipped the tee's broken. But I'm gonna go ahead and set that back up again. And now on this third swing, I'm gonna hit a little bit behind the golf ball or behind this tee. So I'm actually going to come down and on purpose, this is so counterintuitive, it just really doesn't, it doesn't feel like this should work. But the third swing, I'm actually going to hit behind the ball and purposely hit what would be kind of a chunk or a little bit of a fat shot. So now I'm going to make that divot come in behind the ball. And again, you can see I started behind the ball, clipped the tee right out of the ground. The reason this works is because this gives us a frame of reference of what too far back and what too far forward is. When we feel too far back and too far forward, now we can find the center right where we want to be. And as we get a little bit on this side or we get a little bit on this side, it's easy to adjust and find the center. This gives you a great frame of reference for where you are in space. Now that's all great. If we could do that, 
get a couple practice swings in, you wouldn't really have to even know anything about your game, and I guarantee you'd improve just by practicing that drill. But let's make it a little bit easier. Let's speed up your practice time even a little bit more. Now on this one, we're gonna talk about some of the body movements, and I'm gonna get you variability training with one of the pieces of the top speed golf system. We call it the stable fluid spine. So if you want the full details, we go over that. We have a, three levels of videos that go over this in the top speed golf system. I'm gonna give you the condensed version here, which basically is I wanna have a little tilt away from the target with my spine. So if you go from my belt buckle to the center of my chest, tilt it away slightly at address. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm gonna be tilted away about that same amount. As I come into contact, I'm tilted away a little bit more to allow me to be nice and consistent. If you watch all pro golfers, they're tilted away with their body so that they can release that club out in front, the golf ball just gets in the way. So that's what I'm shooting for. If I'm struggling by going this way, let me show you a reverse pivot. A lot of people do this. Now at the top of the swing, instead of my body being tilted away, it's tilted back toward the target. And naturally what I do is I fall back this way and I start to hit behind the golf ball. So if you struggle chunking, I'll bet you $100 this is what's going on. The body's leaning this way and then it's falling back to the right. The opposite problem of that, which is much less common, would be going too far this way and then feeling like you're coming too far from the inside. Your body actually gets too far that way. So as you start to come more up and down, this direction you're gonna be chopping down on the ball. As I start to go more this way, I'm gonna be coming much more from the inside. But those are the both extremes that we're feeling and those are gonna cause us problems hitting this golf ball clean every single time. Again, if we had the reverse pivot, we're falling back and now we're wanting to hit. Look at my bottom, my right shoulder is grounding out behind the ball. If I have the one where I tilt this way, well now I'm so far back I got to slide and all that sliding around makes it difficult to hit the ball clean there too. So the key here is to find what's in the middle or what we call the stable fluid spine throughout the golf swing. And to do this, we're going to practice variability training and then find the middle. So we've got our T drill. On top of that, I want you to do this. The first swing, I want you to take out your video camera, your, your iPhone, whatever you have works fine. And I want you to on purpose have a reverse pivot. Lean back this way, get your body leaning as far as you can that way, really extreme. Make it a bigger reverse pivot as you can. Start to feel what that feels like when you're swaying this way and then falling back. On the next drill, the next swing, I want you to go ahead and do the exact opposite of that. Let's go over here and let's get our body tilted as far to the right. You know, big tilt to the right, way over my right side. Look at my nose, it's way outside my right foot. I'm gonna go there and then I'm gonna swing through. Those are both opposite extremes. Those are both incorrect. Those are gonna cause us a lot of trouble when we're playing. But now that we felt those extremes, now we can find the middle and we can find it fast. So on the third swing, we're gonna take out that camera again. I'm gonna get a little tilt away from the target. I'm gonna to swing to the top and keep that tilt. And then I'm gonna swing through and be able to keep tilt coming away so I'm nice and consistent. That's gonna look something like this. There we go. So if we can do that, that's going to keep us nice and consistent. Our spine isn't moving around. We're going to pair those two things up. Do the T drill. One in front, one on the T, one behind. Then go ahead and do your spine angles. One back here, one over here, and then one nice and consistent like we want to be. And when you start to pair those things up, you're going to immediately see, oh, when I do one thing, really tough to hit the T. If I start doing it right, now it's easy to control the swing. So by changing it, by varying your practice, by practicing hitting the ground in different spots, you're going to improve up to a thousand percent faster. It's pretty exciting stuff. Don't make the mistake that I did and let your game suffer. Practice at variability training. All right guys, I hope you all really enjoyed this video, but I got a great bonus for you. If we want to be really good at golf, we want to have tons of speed, have a lot of fun, really start cranking that ball, we got to have a lot of lag and then release that lag to get tons of speed. I've got my number one lag video. I'm going to play a preview of that here in a second. If you want to click the link that pops up in your screen, if you're on a computer, if you're on a tablet, a mobile device, you're going to need to click the I card. You'll get instant access to that full video. Plus, you're going to get five videos from my Top Speed Golf system. Good luck to you guys. Good luck with that lag. Go out there, crush the ball, have some fun. I'll see you in the lag video. Hi, guys, and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard, and in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. 
It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. If I do it this way versus holding that position, exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.